Tom here from Lawrence Systems. I did a video on January 23rd, 2021 on the Unify Cloud Key Gen 2 and the firmware changes that were made that now make this device, well, require a cloud account to get set up. So you have to have internet access and remove the option for multi-site management. Now, this is something that causes a lot of speculation properly a lot of anger because if you buy a device and that device gets an update, then that update removes features that you previously had. I understand the uh, absolute aggravation that would cause and rightfully so. But what I want to be very clear is even though they both run Unify Software Defined Networking Controller 6.043, which is a free download and you can self-host, the self-hosted version allows for multi-site management and does not require a cloud registration account. So it is only when you purchase a Unified Cloud Key that that is where the problem occurs. That's why I was specific in that video to say it's the firmware update to the Cloud Key causing it, not the Unified Software Defined Networking Controller software. That being said, I want to talk about the people who think that you should just switch and asking me about Unify alternatives. And I want to go back to the year 2013 to give a little bit of history of how we found Unify. Now, going back this far also has to be on the Wayback When machine, because maybe you remember, or maybe you don't, depending on how long you've worked in the tech business or how many products you looked at, was a open mesh company. And they had Cloud Tracks, the free cloud-based network controller software that helps you build, manage, and monitor your wireless network from anywhere in the world. And CloudTrax was pretty cool, but I right away realized when we bought some CloudTrax devices and some Unified devices, by the way, that there was going to be a problem with a controller tied to company given away for free. They have to keep funding the cloud, and if something happens, then we suddenly lose access and the ability to manage all of our devices. So at the same time, I'd also bought these. And i holding it up because you probably see how the logo looks on here. This is probably one of the first ones I bought. And uh, these were great and they worked quite well and offered a self-hosted controller. And here we are eight years later almost, and that still distinguishes Unify from the rest of the marketplace where they have a scalable on-site that you can host controller or host it in your own stack, in your own private cloud, however you want to set it up. They are actually pretty flexible on that and allow the management of many, many devices at many, many sites, each one of them distinct. This is just not something offered by a lot of other companies. And I see a lot of people asking me about alternatives because, and I get it, it's speculation. If they did this to the cloud key, what's next? The software controller? I hope not. Um, I'm very optimistic that they will not do this because I think they are aware of where their cash flow probably comes from. At least, as far as I can tell, a massive amount of the products sold, I mean, don't get me wrong, consumers and so to speak like home lab and end users who buy a handful of these devices certainly make up a massive percentage of it but i also know it people not just myself but other ones that we've consulted with and we work with with deployments that literally spend three or four hundred thousand constantly on their products like we're talking just massive buys of large scale deployments. And the big reason for doing it is because they have a self-hosted controller. We've sold a lot of jobs to companies that have multiple sites, many, many deployed, and they wanted a single dashboard and they were already burned by insert name of some other company because they don't like the way the cloud controller worked or they raised prices on it or the licensing fees. Or one case was the company was mad because they were discontinuing certain models and they're like, oh, we're you have to pay extra for support on older models was their answer for end of life. And they're like, the models work fine, but you kind of get the idea. They didn't like that being married to some controller that they had no say so in. Now, obviously there is the challenge if Unify does make that change to controller, what would happen? Well, in the case of that company or even me, we would keep the last version that did work and figure out a solution at that point in time. I think it's too early to say that that would happen because I think Unify, as I stated, has a strong awareness of where their products are going and who buys them at scale. That being said, the changing of it and looking at alternatives, I think is still fair to do. It's always good to keep a look at the other competition in the marketplace, but then we have competing business models. You have like Aruba and Sanan or a few other companies, Meraki, and they're cloud only. There's no local management of this particular access point. And I did review this Aruba and Sanan. I've not reviewed the Meraki 
I think I did do maybe one or two videos kind of talking about it because they're probably one of the bigger ones in the market being that they're owned by Cisco and they do a lot of marketing. But that being said, they're cloud only as well. So yeah, if Meraki uh, changes license or whatever, you are completely beholden to their cloud. You you are not, if they give you a 30 day notice, you have 30 days to swap out infrastructure at however many sites you're managing. Um, does it likely they'll do that? No, but they may raise prices. That definitely does happen from time to time and you are just beholden to that and et cetera, et cetera. Not to get too off topic. I will mention though, TP-Link Omada. I have taken a brief look at it and I don't know that they're ready to compete at all uh, in the Unify space. They're a very beta feeling product. It does look a lot like the Unify software. It's even built on MongoDB. Um, I even had it crash on me setting up and have some problems, which I haven't really sorted out. Uh, but I will reach out to them and look at it because I, I want to look at it as an alternative, but I don't realistically, as optimistic as I am about many things, I'm not as optimistic that TP-Link is going to be able to build a scalable product that would be able to deploy the way you can over at Unify. It just doesn't look like they're, I don't know, I, I don't have a lot of faith in them as there. Maybe I'm wrong. I wouldn't mind being proven wrong on that and they end up making a great product. Not to digress. The next one that comes up a lot is Ruckus. Now, I've not done a review on Ruckus. I believe Chris from Crosstalk has, but Ruckus Unleashed is one of their models that doesn't require any licensing, as I understand it right now here in January 2020. But it does have a lot of limitations itself. There's a finite number of devices that you can adopt to the controller. It doesn't support any of their switches. And when I started looking at some of the other limitations, it kind of feels like their deviations from their zone director, their commercial paid licensed version of their software is kind of like they give you the basics, which for home users is probably perfectly fine. Uh, people who only have a few of them, I mean, 25 is more than a lot of people put in their lab or in their house. But when you start talking about the scalable systems, well, you either are gonna buy one of the zone binder license. I mean, we have clients with 300, 400 access points plus all the switching. And uh, so they, this is not like a drop in fit at all for that. Not to mention you go back to license licensing fees when you start doing it at that scale. So my overall, I hope Unify doesn't keep making these changes and try to be more consumer focused. I think it's kind of a split and they just don't see this as a device that we would host multiple sites on. Matter of fact, it's probably a support nightmare for them because we certainly have helped move people off of cloud keys because they didn't read that little thing there. It says, hey, there's a 50 device limit. We find people trying to put more devices on here than they should. We try and find people putting just in general, trying to make this box do more than it can. I mean, it's a $200 box, but it's not, um, it's not really that scalable. And this is possibly why they did that. I don't know. I'm still speculating. I really wish Unify would be clear and concise and have very clear public statements and roadmaps. So we think that this is the small home device and we're going to leave alone the Unify software defined networking controller because we think that is the business use case and we're going to keep that doing perfectly fine with uh, multi-site management and all the features that you're used to on there. We don't have any plans to change it. So rest easy there, IT and MSP people who have deployed thousands and thousands of product. But unfortunately, Unify doesn't make the most clear public statements. I hope that changes. This video is just to raise some awareness out there that I'm aware of some of these alternatives. If you are aware though, because the people I've talked to do not seem to know of anyone. If you are aware of a company that offers an on-site controller that scales like Unify, that isn't TP-Link Omada, because that's the only one so far I've even looked at that I, I see what they're doing, trying to copy, matter of fact, very much copy what Unify is doing, right down to a very similar user interface and user experience. And matter of fact, my understanding is you can't even do multiple IPs on the WAN. I mean, they're really copying Unify, including the flaws. Not to digress, if you're aware of one, please, let me know. Leave it in the comments below. Mention the name of a company out there. I don't know that there's someone going to jump in and fill the void if Unify does change because every other company is kind of betting against Unify by having a cloud because that's how you maintain and control the ecosystem. I actually like the fact that Unify is kind of fighting against that because all these companies and from a purely business, non-technical standpoint, if you want product lock-in, tie it to a cloud with no other option. You then control the strings. You control the revenue. If you want more money, turn that license number up a little bit. You just dial it up a notch. You have a meeting and you decide how much before our 
competitors uh, would gain some of our customers. And you're going, okay, well, the competitors just raise their prices too. And that's usually the cue. All right, do we need more competitors? Uh, we need more of their customers or do we want to uh, raise our prices too? So we need a margin as well. These are some of the problems that happen when every company is offering a cloud. Unify is the one company fighting against it. I don't think some of these free offerings would even exist by these other companies like Aruba and Sanan, um, like I have right here, if Unify didn't offer this because they kind of stand alone, as I said in the beginning, in the market for that. Let me know your thoughts below. Let me know if you know a company that does compete directly with Unify with a self-hosted on-site controller that scales and offers management at the way Unify does. Uh, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.